Right then, so um, a good place to start is having a good look at your parts that have come off the printer. Now, these are the um, parts required to make up the right hand, um, let me see, upper wing, wing skin on the Hunter. Um, so there's four parts. Um, each, each one of these took uh, probably about eight and a half, nine hours to print. So there's a lot of printing time that's gone into these. Um, this slicing on them was quite technical in the end. Um, I shan't go into that too much detail. Um, as it's another, it's a, it's, a, it's a whole tutorial on its own right. So, just broadly speaking, they, they printed at um, 0.1 um, millimeter layer heights. There's two shells. Um, there's on these ones, I think there's eight bottoms at 1.1, sorry, 0.1 millimeters or four at 0.2 millimeters, depending on where they fell um, in the development of. <laughs> things um, and I think there's eight tops as well. Um, what I also did was to speed things up even though the shell is printed at um, 0.1 millimeters the infills done at um, 0.2 millimeters and all the support was done at 0.2 millimeters um, and then at the very very top here um, before the lid goes on or the top goes on I, the support went back down to um, so the sport was 10% uh, for sort of 98% of the print, and then for the last 2% of the print, um, we changed that to 20% support um, with a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, and the shells remaining at 0.1 millimeter layer heights. So, like I say, it's a bit technical the, the slicing for these, um, but that sort of combination is what I arrived at in the end to get the best. Um, best quality ABS prints of my print at the moment. Another really important consideration was the orientation and how I was going to be joining these. And it took several attempts, uh, a lot of trial and error, um, to come up with this setup. So the, when, I, when I originally set up, I thought, oh, this, this, this would be the joining face, really. So the prints I used to, I printed upside down like this, yeah thinking that this is going to be the smooth face, which it is smooth, but with ABS, as many of you probably know, it um, distorts, and the chances are it's going to lift your corners. These um, rafts, I suppose you could call it, or skirts, it's, it's, it's something I've designed actually into the model, so it's not slicer by, slicer by based. It's um, something I actually designed, and I think they want 0.6 millimeters thick. Um, and they seem to be working quite well for me. What I found is, you know, rather go overboard on your platform or your um, raft or whatever you want to call it, because um, they're easy enough to remove at the end. Um, the last thing you want is the print lifting off. Uh, the other thing I found was um, I decided that it was better for the let the print crack um, rather than than um, have it lift off the bottom. I was having some prints come through where it would actually be okay because it lifted the bottom, but what I found is because of the, th the way the 3D printing works, um, even though it's cracked there, the geometry at the top is still going to be perfect as long as that cracks happen during the print, you know, below that point, below that surface. Um, probably confusing everyone, but hopefully those who, who do a lot of the 3D printing will understand what I'm talking about. So, um, not at all bothered about these cracks anymore. Um, really easy to repair, um, so it's not really a problem. Um, you might think that that's, that is basically just ABS, the nature of the beast that we're working with. Um, a really good example was two parts printed exactly, exactly the same parts from the exactly same file, yeah, uh, printed. Um, and all they were done, oh, I'm the to part with me here. Why have I? No, I have. So we had this, we've got this one here. Yeah, you can see how bad those cracks are. Yeah. So that this is sort of unacceptable to use. This is too much. Um, there's too much that's going to be out. And so my, my dial picks wouldn't match up. Um, so 
this one was printed during the evening, so at night basically. So I started to print it about, about, must be about eight o'clock. So I went through the night and finished about six in the morning, something like that. And um, I woke up this morning in the morning expecting to have a usable part, and this is what I had. Printed exactly. I, I just reprinted the the part during the day, and this is the part I came out with. It's exactly the same file, just printed during the day. Um, so I, I went back onto the internet and sort of found out what the ambient temperature of the room was approximately in Birmingham. It went down to about minus two at night. So even, although there's a heated bull plate in the printer um, and it's all enclosed, the the overall um, printing environment was a lot colder. And therefore, the difference between the um, the glass points and the plastic was a lot more severe in this instance than in this instance. Um, I think the um, room temperature during the day when this was printed was about 19, 20 degrees Celsius. So, you know, and that was all day. Um, and the temperature dropped to minus two, uh, sorry, about two degrees at night. So it made a huge, huge difference. I mean, if I had reprinted it, I would have just gone, oh, that's just ABS. Um, so ever since I've had this ex this experience, um, I don't do any long prints overnight. Um, it's just not worth wasting eight, nine hours um, to have a failure at the end. So I've been printing all these big pieces during the day. Um, when it's a little bit warmer in the in the in the room that I'm printing in. So um, again, going back to the little observation on the rafts, on I don't know what to call these pads, rafts. Um, not really a raft because it's done outside the slicing software. It's actually done in the CAD from the CAD side of things. But um, and I'm building on glass, and I don't know whether you can see here, but there's an old glass build plate that I'm using, and the adhesion uh, with the um, hairspray and the glass is that strong it's actually delaminated the glass and the glass is trying to chip. Like I said it's an old build plate so it's, it's, it's on its last legs really. It's only 2 mil pitcher glass. Really cheap 2 mil pitcher glass. But you can see it's actually pulled up bits of glass onto the base of these, um, onto the base of some of these prints. Um, that's a nice example of where it's pulled up. You can see it's pulled up there. But like I say, that is nothing. That's a really successful print. Um, that's printed really well. Got no cracks in that. Um, a slight crack there. Um, right on there. All the stress is coming right to that point. <laughs> nice, uh, nice one to show your students. <laughs> um, but all, the, all your forces, all your stress is focusing right in onto that corner. So it's a bad design on my point, part. But anyway, um, so obviously, grab your print of your of the bill plate. Give it have a good look at it um, before you do anything, uh, because unfortunately, it's only right at the end when you actually cast the part that you actually know with all that work and finishing these is um, was worth it. I've done some where the where I've sort of cut corners. And I went, oh, that would be good enough. Um, something like this, perhaps, yeah, where I've repaired this and I've gone, oh, you know, that'll be good enough. But when I've come to actually cast, my dials didn't line up quite right and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that doesn't mean to go on. So if you have any doubt whatsoever, you know, before you spend three, four, five hours finishing the moulds, um, you know, have a good look at your part. Uh, for defects and, and take it from there.